Let's talk about the prime factors code kata. Prime factors is a kata in which the challenge is to develop an algorithm which will perform the prime factorization of some positive integer. What I mean is that given some positive integer, we need to develop an algorithm which will return a list. In that list will be prime numbers. The product of those prime numbers should be equal to the integer given. Take 75, for example. In this instance, I'd expect the algorithm to return a list containing three, five, and five. Those are all prime numbers, and the product of those numbers is 75. So we're gonna start out like we always do with a test. And to write this test, the first question is gonna be, what's the name of the method being tested? In this case, you can see I've already made the decision to name the class prime factors. Uh, so I think a reasonable name for the method is gonna be the name of, much like we did in the FizzBuzz episode. So the reason I like this name is because again, it's gonna read really nicely. Uh, this will read like prime factors of 123. Next question is what are our inputs gonna be? So the rules are we need to support the positive integers. And the first of the positive integers is of course one. So the question is now, what are the prime factors of one? And the answer is there aren't any. So one is gonna be a kind of special case. It's the only positive integer that does not have prime factors. So the prime factors of one is an empty list. All right, so of does not exist. Let's create it. And we know this needs to return a list and that list is gonna contain integers like so. Now, in this case, I'm going to actually change the variable name to an n. I know in previous videos I've used an i here and this is a change I've made lately. I realized that i is the name that as a community we've decided we're gonna use for iterators. Uh, so it would probably be inappropriate to use it as a parameter name. n works just as well, it serves the same purpose and so that's what I've switched to using lately. Okay, so this obviously fails. Uh, but to make it pass is really quite simple. All we need to do is return an empty list. Now you'll note that uh, in the production code here, I've used an array list, whereas in the test, I use an immutable list. I use a lot of immutable objects in tests because they don't really change very often. It's, it's very rare that I have unit tests, which are modifying state. Um, on the other hand, in the production code side, I know for a fact that I'm going to need to add stuff to this list later, right? The rest of the tests are not going to be empty. So it'd be kind of silly to start out with an immutable list and then later have to change types to an array list when it's so obvious that that's gonna be the case from the beginning. Okay, that makes our test pass. So let's move on to the next one. And the next one is obviously two. So two and the prime factors of two is a list that contains two. Uh, two is a prime number, and this is actually gonna be true of all of the prime numbers. They are their own set of prime factors. This is just the first of many. Okay, so that fails as expected. We'd be in trouble if it passed. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, pull this list out because like I said, we, need, we know we need to add stuff to it. So it's going to need to be in some kind of variable so that we can call methods on it. Um, I'm gonna call that variable factors. All right, we wanna code against uh, interfaces, not implementation. So I'm gonna change this to a list, not an array list. Uh, and the next question is, okay, when do we need to add stuff to it? Because not always, right? Our first test shows us that there is a case where nothing needs to be added to this. Um, so we're gonna definitely need a con conditional here. So we're gonna go if, and the condition is, well, in our in the case right now, all we, that we really need to worry about is when n is two, right? So if n is equal to two, then uh, we're going to take the factors list and we are going to add a two to it. And now our test pass. Next test. Um, okay, so three is also a prime number. And therefore the prime factors of three is the immutable list that contains a three. Now that fails. And the reason it fails is because the only prime number that we support right now is a two. Uh, so this is not generic enough. Uh, we at this point need to be able to handle the case where 
you know, uh, it's a one and the list is empty. That's not going to change here. Um, and then we also need either two or three, which really is any other n, right? Any other n that gets passed in other than one. So uh, why don't we go ahead and change this to n? And this needs to be changed to say anything but one. So how about as long as n is greater than one? There, that works. We got passage. Okay. Next, um, four. So four is interesting because it's the first number that has that is not prime. Um, so the prime factors of four are two and two. Prime factors of four is the immutable list containing a two and a two. Okay, obviously that doesn't work because we have no code that adds to the factors list twice. Um, so, okay, when is it that we want this to happen? Um, well, I guess uh, maybe whenever n is divisible by two, uh, that would distinguish this case from the other cases. So uh, another condition in here and say, okay, if n uh, mod two equals zero, which of course is how we kind of write is divisible by. So then we're going to do factors dot add, and we're going to add in the two. But 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 now we've accounted for one of the two, so we need to uh, reduce n by that two. With that, our new test passes, um, but we do have a failure in one of the old tests. And if we take a look at that failure. Uh, it's going to tell us that it was expecting to get a 2 in the list, but it found that both 2 and 1 were in the list. This is odd because, remember, uh, from the very beginning, we've been trying to avoid getting a 1 in there. But, of course, in the case where n is 2, 2 is divisible by 2. We reduce by 2. That gives us a 1. And then, oh, look, we added a 1 into the list. So let's just throw in a little hack here, and we'll just check again that n is still greater than one, like so. And that should work. It does work. Uh, and I'm not ready to refactor this yet. Um, it's not clear to me at this point uh, how it should be refactored, except for one thing, which is that it, it is pretty clear that this does not need to be inside of this other check to see if n is greater than one. Uh, and so I'm going to move it out. In general, I try to avoid nesting of loops or conditionals, if at all possible. So I'd much rather pull this out uh, and kind of flatten that um, that nesting uh, rather than leave it where it was. All right, so let's move on. And up next is five. Um, five is not really interesting because it's yet another prime number. And at this point, we've covered uh, prime numbers uh, in two forms. So uh, I think it's safe to say the algorithm is generic enough for that. Um, next is six. Six is possibly interesting um, because it's our first test that contains a list with more than one thing in it, and they're not the same integer. Um, and that's because the prime factors of six are two uh, and three, like so. So let's just check this one. I, I, I think that actually our algorithm is going to be able to handle this. Actually, I, I know that the algorithm can handle this, but this is still an interesting test, and so I would leave it in, unlike the five, which I wouldn't I wouldn't bother writing a test for that. Of course, it passes. Uh, so let's move on to uh, seven again, prime number again, not really interesting. So let's go into eight. So what are the prime factors of eight? Ah, this is interesting because we get uh, three numbers: two, two, and two. And of course, we have no code anywhere that adds three numbers to our list. So prime factors of eight is an immutable list of two, two, two. Sure enough, it fails as expected. OK, so um, what are we going to do about this? Well, it is interesting. We have. Uh, a little, a couple lines of code here that checks to see if something is divisible by two, and then adds a two and reduces by two. Uh, this is great, except we only do it one time. If we could do this more than one time, then that should be uh, just as capable of factoring an eight as a four. 
um, and, and in fact, any, any multiple of two. So uh, luckily, we've got a convenient mechanism for doing that. It's called the while loop. And with that, our tests pass. Next test, um, nine. Nine is interesting in the same way that it was interesting to test both two and three, it's interesting to test both eight and nine. So in nine's case, we get more than one uh, integer in our result list, uh, but they are not twos, they are threes this time. The factors of nine, prime factors of nine, is the immutable list that contains, whoops, a three, and a three. This fails. Okay, so um, we've already got code that um, factors out twos, and basically we need to do the exact same thing with threes, right? So we could copy this while loop uh, and, and make another one of them, but that doesn't actually make the code any more generic because then you know later on we're going to get into multiples of of other prime numbers like five and seven, and uh, we're going to just have to keep doing the same thing. So no, that's not quite right. Um, what we actually want is uh, we want a generic way of factoring out some integer. And in this case, the sum integer was a two, but in other cases, we'll want it to be other things. So why don't we pull this out? And instead of being a two, let's make it a variable called divisor. All right, and we want to be able to increment this divisor when? Well, after we're done factoring out whatever it is, right? So down here. Okay, but uh, if we do this, then it's just going to uh, get reset to a two each time. So let's pull this out of here, um, out of this thing, which is going to become a loop. And with that, ah, test pass. Um, it's also interesting to note that at this point, we've made this second check irrelevant, right? Because we're not going to exit the while loop until n is no longer greater than one. So there's no chance that this is true. Let's pull it. And sure enough, the test still passed, so that works. All right, so actually, it turns out that we're, we're, we're done. Well, I mean, we're, we're not done from a refactoring standpoint, but we are done from a functional standpoint. Okay, so let's do uh, what I'm gonna call an acceptance test. And prime factors of, and this is how I'm gonna do this, we'll do, uh, we'll write out the prime numbers and multiply them together to come up with some number. So two times two times two times three times three times five times seven times 11. Those are all primes multiplied together should give us some number. And what's nice about this particular number is that we already know what the prime factorization of it is, even without doing all that multiplication and then factoring it out, because it's obviously going to be 2 comma 2 comma 2 comma 3 comma 3 comma 5 comma 7 comma 11. And sure enough, it works. It passes. All right. With this assurance of these tests, uh, let's do some serious refactoring. Um, and the, the main thing here is just that while loops, um, while convenient when you're transforming if statements, uh, because they're so similar, uh, are rather wordy. So um, you can take a while loop and convert it to a for loop, which is a much more concise kind of terse way to describe this um, by putting the initializer here and then the incrementer here and then changing that to the word for, oh, we gotta get rid of that semicolon, check. Sure enough, we still pass. Um, and then this one is a little different because it doesn't actually have an initializer. The, the initializer is essentially the, the parameter that was passed in. Um, but, but we do, well, we don't increment it, but, but we do um, do this at the end of every for loop to uh, change the value of the n. And that passes. Um, and now all of these braces are unnecessary because there's only one statement in each of the loops, and that passes. Now we're done. Look at that. It's like, what, four or five lines of code? And that little algorithm is pretty darn good 
at performing the prime factorization of any positive integer.